Web3 is a wide and all-encompassing term, but what are the components of Web3? How do they work together? How do they stack on top of each other? I'm Radek, I'm a developer advocate at QuickNote, and in this video, I will give a big picture overview of Web3 developer stack with lots of examples to give you an idea of how everything works together and where to start looking if you want to go deeper into the stack. Ready? Let's go. In the video, I will go a little bit deeper in more detail into the Web3 developer stack. But if you want something simpler and with a specific code example to try out yourself and in a written form, then you can read this short and sweet guide on QuickNote. The link is in the description. And actually the links to everything that I will be showing will be in the description. So if you are interested in something specific, just go read and click and you'll get what you want. Now you might be familiar with a couple of web dev stacks already, like Mern, Mean, or an older one, LAMP. In this case, a web dev stack is a set of technologies that you use in order to get your app to the user. So basically it's a front end, what you show to the user. It's a back end, what is behind the scenes, providing what to show to the user and a couple other things like a database where to store the data and maybe where and how to deploy it. In Web3, it's a little bit more complicated because there are more moving parts. There is a blockchain, there is an identity management, there are other things to consider. So rather than something simpler like this, it can go as complex as something like this. So this is a chart by Coinbase Venture and you see a few layers here, the protocols, which are the blockchains, then infrastructure on top of the blockchains, then developer tools that you use to interact with the blockchain, and then app enablement on top. Both this version and this version is an actual example of a developer stack, but I want to do something in between, not as simplistic as the first one, but also not as complicated as the second one. The title of this video is Web3 Developer Stack, so let's make it a proper stack. So at the bottom of the stack, there is a blockchain. You need to choose and decide which blockchain do you use as your base protocol. So where do you build? And everything else is on top of that. There are many blockchains to choose from. Layer 1 blockchains, layer 2 blockchains, side chains. And depending on what your needs are, either security or user base or speed of transactions or cost of transactions, you can choose a blockchain to meet your most important needs. You can check some of those blockchains on QuickNote, for example, Ethereum, the biggest one, Solana, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, Arbitrum, just pick your poison and roll with it. Once you have a blockchain to build on, then you need to write a smart contract to put on that blockchain. So let's skip one level for now and let's go to backend. So you need to write a smart contract. For that, you need a development environment where you can do that to write it, to test it, to deploy it. Once you have the backend, then you also need to make it pretty. You need to put a front end on top of it. With the back end and front end ready, we come back two steps down to actual infrastructure, how the back end and front end talk to the blockchain. For that, we have RPC nodes that let you talk to blockchain, read from blockchain, write to blockchain. We have APIs to make your lives easier to read and write from blockchain faster. We have oracles with the data. We also need to think about storage, about identity management, and it's all in infrastructure level. And once we have the front end, the back end, and it talks to blockchain and it reads from blockchain and it writes to blockchain, then we need to deploy it to make it live, to show it to the world and to get all the users to our app, to our DAP, to our service. Okay, we have chosen a blockchain or we have been given a blockchain to build on and we don't have a say in that. Again, let's skip the infrastructure stack for now and let's go to backend into more detail and see what options do we have there. Let's have a look at smart contract development and add developer environments. Solidity is the most popular and best known smart contract development language. It's for EVM based blockchains and Ethereum is the biggest one. If you want to get into Web3 development, you almost certainly need to learn Solidity. But even for EVM-based blockchains, Solidity is not the only option. 
if you know Python, if you're proficient in Python and you want to continue using Python or Python-like language, then Viper is for you. Another smart contract development language is Rust. It's for Solana. If you plan to build on Solana, then you need to use Rust. And one of its main selling points is that it's really, really fast. Okay, let's say you've settled on Ethereum and Solidity. To start somewhere and to start properly, you can use something like Open Zeppelin. It's battle-tested libraries of smart contracts for Ethereum, but also for other blockchains. And it includes the most used implementations of ERC standards like ERC20 or ERC721, which is like coins and NFTs. A lot of projects are built on top of Open Zeppelin, or at least started out as Open Zeppelin contracts and then built out. Soulmate is something similar to Open Zeppelin. It's a set of modern opinionated gas optimized building blocks for smart contract development and they are doing a good job at gas optimization and at being high quality code. If what you plan to build was not on Open Zeppelin or not on Soulmate, then you can use Cookbook to find any smart contract to build your project faster and it's a platform aggregating all or many smart contract libraries. Okay, now you have a blockchain, a smart contract development language, and you even have a sample smart contract to start with. You need to do the actual coding now. And for that, the simplest thing to do, but also very powerful is Remix. You can start coding in seconds in Remix and actually connect the blockchain to read from blockchain to write to blockchain without the need for all the other infrastructure. So it's a great playground, a great place to start with, and some projects are even built entirely in Remix. And this is one of the examples, like for example, QuickNote token that I have launched on Testnet was written, built, and launched from Remix. Once you have played in Remix, once you know what you're doing and you need more power and more control over everything, then it's time to graduate to a development environment for professionals. And Hard Hat is just that. It's a set of tools, it's battle tested, it's very high quality, it has practically everything that you might ever need. If you don't end up using Hardhat, you at least need to know what it can do so that you can compare every other toolset to Hardhat to know if it's good or not. Truffle is another suite of tools that you can use for smart contract development. And Brownie as well. It's a Python-based development testing framework and it's for EVM blockchains. And I saved the best for last. Foundry is a fast, portable, modular toolkit for Ethereum application development written in Rust. So one of the main benefits that you get is that it's really, really fast. It's faster like tens or hundreds times for many of the tasks. And it's not yet as feature complete as Hardhat, but in many areas it's already better and faster or both. And it's being very actively developed and more and more developers are moving from Hardhat to Foundry. There is a great resource to learn the basics and to start actually working with Foundry, which is Foundry Book. Go through the book, see what Foundry can do, and you might never leave and just stay with Foundry. Okay, blockchain is covered, backend is covered. Now let's move to frontend before we go to infrastructure. So what are the options for frontend? There are plenty. Like for almost anything in tech, in web technologies right now, JavaScript is de facto standard. Fortunately for some, unfortunately for most, but that's the reality that we are in. So React is also a de facto standard for Web3 frontend. The majority of projects are using React and Next.js is the React framework that is very popular, very versatile and widely used. But it's not all JavaScript. If you want, you can also use Python. That's also an option, but just not as widely used. 
and not as many tools for Python as for React and JavaScript. You want your site to also look nice and to be relatively easy to develop and Tailwind CSS is great for that. It's a CSS framework that you install and then you use it inline in code rather than in a separate CSS file and you use descriptive class names to do what you want it to do and to not need to remember all and every class name and to maintain all those class names and thousands of lines of code. Checker UI is a similar framework, but Tailwood is more widely used. So now we have the website, it looks nice, but now we need it to talk to blockchain. And for that, we need a API between the JavaScript that we use for front end and the blockchain that is in the back end and for the smart contract that is in the back end. And Web3.js is a collection of libraries that allow you to interact with a local or remote Ethereum node using HTTP, IPC or WebSocket. Ethers.js is a similar one, a complete and compact library for interacting with Ethereum blockchain and its ecosystem and it's actually used as part of many projects or frameworks so it's good to really know it but if you're more into python then web3py might be more your thing it's a python library to interact with ethereum and the original api was derived from web3.js okay now we have those libraries now let's make good use of them practically all web3 projects need to connect to a wallet so we want and we need a easy, simple, but effective way to connect to each and every wallet. There are more and more of them on the market. And if you want to connect to a wallet, use Wallet Connect. And if you're going to use Wallet Connect, go for something even more specific. Go for Web3 Modal. Simple, powerful, effective very easy to implement and use and actually very powerful in the back end. This is how it looks in action. Try it out. You see the button, you need to connect a wallet. You click on that, you choose one of many wallets, let's say MetaMask, and you are connected. Now you can either switch the blockchain or log out, which is disconnect. That's it all in a few lines of code. We have a website now, we've made it beautiful. We have a smart contract that will do all the heavy lifting and that will talk to the blockchain and that will have all the fancy logic behind it. Now we need to connect to blockchain. We need to talk to it and we need to do it effectively. We need to make it easily and we need it fast and reliable as well. And that's where infrastructure comes in. But actually, before going to infrastructure, there is a one small element between the backend and infrastructure, which is a faucet. So in order to do anything on blockchain, on testnet, when you are still developing, you need Ethereum. You need testnet Ethereum to interact and to pay gas for your transactions and for deploying smart contracts. And to get Ethereum on testnet, you need a faucet to give it to you. You can go to faucetquicknode.com, you can connect a wallet, and you can choose your chain, Ethereum, Polygon, Binance, let's say Ethereum, then select your network, let's say Girly, and there's your wallet, and you can get 0.1 or 1 if you share on Twitter, test ETH. And once the transaction go through, you have 0.1 ETH in your wallet on testnet. Okay, now that we have like money to play on testnet, we can go to actual infrastructure and see what's inside. To start with, to connect to any blockchain, you need an RPC node that lets you read from blockchain, write to blockchain, and if your RPC node is fast, the faster it is, the more effectively you can interact with blockchain and the faster your app or dApp is to the end user. But fast or slow, you need RPC node for doing anything on blockchain. And QuickNode provides RPC nodes for 
16 blockchains and more and more are being added as we speak. You can create a free account and be started in minutes, whichever blockchain you want. Let's start with Ethereum. Fill out the form and you'll have an RPC node to use in a minute or two. And once you can talk to blockchain, once you can read and write, in order not to read too much or do too much work for reading or writing, there are actually APIs that make your life easier and that can do it for you. And QuickNote provides a core API to read and write to blockchain, like get the last block, write the transaction and stuff like that. And token API is ERC20 tokens, which is the coins. So give me the, all the coins that the given wallet has. Give me the activity for this specific coin, for this token, for this specific wallet. Give me the details of this coin, the price and so on. All this in simple API functions and calls. NFT API. Instead of doing multiple reads, instead of stitching together all the data to get only part of what you need from all the transactions that came back to you. You send out one API call and you get all the information about the NFT collection, about all the NFTs that a wallet has, about a history of a specific NFT and so on. And there's even more powerful NFT API with GraphQL from IC Tools. So now we can connect to blockchain. Now we can have our life easier with APIs. Let's talk about storage, where to store the data. For example, we produce some assets, maybe it's an NFT collection and we need to store those assets somewhere. We don't want to store them on like Amazon cloud or anywhere else because it's there today, but it's not guaranteed that it will be there tomorrow. So we want decentralized storage, and there are many options for that. IPFS is a very powerful and versatile protocol, and even their name shows their ambition. IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System. Ambitious, isn't it? Filecoin is a network built on top of IPFS, but it's much more than just storage. It's a storage protocol, incentive layer, and much, much more. And a few of the products of their offerings are specifically for Web3 storage. Speaking of which, Web3 storage. It's a Filecoin product, built on top of IPFS and specifically geared onto storing data indefinitely. And if your use case is more specific, for example, you are building an NFT collection and you want to store your art somewhere where you can be sure that it will be there, that it will be there a year from now or a couple of years from now, that it will not be censored, that it's decentralized, then NFT storage is hard to beat. It's actually free because of the way the Filecoin protocol works, they are incentivizing NFT storage and rewarding storage providers to have NFTs as their use case. So you get the storage for free, but it's actually still benefiting from being built on top of IPFS, being part of Filecoin and being specifically built for NFT use case. Arweave is another service that enables you to store your data forever and they are even actually calling it permaweb. That gives you an idea what they do. And they're actually good at what they do too. Pinata is another service for NFTs specifically. It's not a free offering, but they also offer more services than just storage. If you are into NFTs, look into it. Bundler is another decentralized storage scaling platform. It's powered by Arweave and through decentralized consensus, they transparently show the source and time at which data originated and it proves that it has not been tampered with. So quite unique and quite important. Now that you have your storage needs solved, you need reliable sources of data, of market data that you can use in your app and that you can trust 100%. And because everything is on-chain, everything is transparent and everything is irreversible, 
it's actually extremely important to have reliable source of data and have the source of data that cannot be tampered with. And that's what oracles provide. And Chainlink is one of the biggest oracle providers and they give you tamper-proof inputs, outputs and computations to support advanced smart contracts on any blockchain. Pith Network is another oracle that provides price feeds, that provides high fidelity, high frequency market data for your, for example, DeFi application and it's critical for your app if you are building DeFi to have that data tamper-proof but also as fresh as possible because your users and you yourself rely on it, your business relies on it. Flux is another option for oracles for trustless data layer for you to look into and to decide if you want to use it. The last piece of infrastructure is identity management. You have everything, your app, it's working, it's talking to the blockchain, it's live, ready for users. But for users to come and interact, they need their identities in their wallets and you need to be able to manage those identities and to interact with those wallets in a safe and reliable way. And the best now, the most popular wallet on the market is MetaMask. You probably have it already. It's practically a default for anybody in Web3, or at least they have it even if they use something else they have it in their system. If you are on Solana, you probably have a Phantom wallet, or at least you know about it. And they're actually beta testing now a wallet with an option for Ethereum as well. So it will be even more versatile very soon. It's a nice wallet. It's a must if you're on Solana. If you are on Ethereum, you will soon will be able to use it too. And the last piece of identity management is ENS. Ethereum name service. All those .eth domain names, .eth nicknames, like velvetshark.eth, all of that is managed by ENS, by Ethereum name service. You can go to an app, you can check if your name is available, and if not, you can see all the details of the wallet address that owns it. For example, is velvetshark available? No, it's not. It is registered until 2031. And this is the wallet address that registered it. And this is the Twitter. This is the URL of the website. This is GitHub of the person that registered it. And that person happens to be me. Now we have everything. We know the blockchain that we are building on. We have written the smart contract for that blockchain. We have built a pretty website. We have connected it to the blockchain. We are using many APIs that are making our lives easier. We are using oracles for market data. We are using decentralized storage. We are using identity of our users. And now we need to deploy it. We need to make it live. We need to put it out to the world. And that's the last step. And for this, I will not give many options. I will give just one. And that's Vercel. It's not just for Web3. It's a platform for front-end developers. It's a platform to put your website live to all the users to come and use and interact with your website that connects to blockchain, that does all the smart things. All of that is provided reliably and easily through Vercel. So, I recommend it to start with this. If you want to go to something else later on, feel free to do it, but definitely give it a try. Start using Vercel. It's the most versatile and easy, but also powerful tool on the market right now. And that's it. That's the whole Web3 development stack. You know all the stacks, you know how they interact with each other. You know what to start with, you know what to put on top, you know what to end with. Now it's time to just go and build, go and learn, go build, go put something live, even on testnet, then on mainnet, then start getting users and iterating. And if what you have seen is still not enough for you, if you want to know more, if you want to learn more, I have a couple resources for you. The first one, quick note guides. 
QuickNote has lots of guides for Ethereum development, for smart contract development, for DeFi, for marketplace, for infrastructure, for security, for Solana. There are hundreds of them. So whatever you need, QuickNote probably has it. And if you want even more of those tools, even more of those layers, even more of those examples, then you can go to Ethereum developer tool list with all the tools and platforms for developing on Ethereum specifically. And even the table of contents for this is long. So there is a lot here and you can spend weeks, months or years learning all of that. So choose wisely know what you're looking for. You should be able to know that from this video, learn like laser focused and go build. So now you know how the big picture looks like. Now go and look at many small pictures, go into each and every layer, choose one option from that layer, from that stack, learn about it, play with it, maybe build something simple with it and don't forget to have fun. And when you build something, let me know. Cool? See you soon.